Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Overcomers class. I hope you're having a great day. Let me encourage you just to do a couple of things real quick. First of all, uh, share the broadcast on Facebook here, and then also like it. And then uh, make sure you let me know you're watching. Uh, I want to be praying for you. If you have any prayer requests, any uh, testimonies that you'd like to share with me, then go ahead and get that to me as well. Uh, I want to give you just a few announcements. Uh, I'll be announcing about our time of encouragement uh, about this week. Uh, just uh, We plan on having it Thursday night at 8.15, but I'll let you guys know for sure on uh, social media. Uh, but uh, we do plan on doing that this coming Thursday at 8.15. Also, remind you that, that uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, we will restart our Phase 3 of our plan. And uh, uh, you will need to register for that class for, for September 13th. So let me encourage you to be uh, to go to the worthbc.org uh, 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 website and then uh, register there for coming to class on September the 13th. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be mission conference, and I hope that you plan on being here with me that day. Okay? I want to ask you to take your Bibles this morning. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and this morning we're going to be talking about uh, being an ambassador. We're going to end up, finish up this uh, uh, series of lessons we've been doing over the metaphors of the Bible, uh, how God uses metaphors uh, to show us how we are to live the Christian life. So I'm looking for, I've, I've enjoyed this. It's been a fun study. I wish you could have been here in these seats to, uh, for me to teach it to, but that's all right. And I appreciate your faithfulness right there on uh, social media to be able to, uh, to follow along what's going on. And you guys have been such a blessing, and I love you. And can't wait till the 13th to get people back here in these cha chairs. It's going to be a great day. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and uh, we'll get into our lesson this morning. Okay, Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the day and your blessings to us. Lord, we are so grateful for, Lord, what you've given us. We're so thankful that uh, we're going to be sued into our phase three getting people back into Sunday school. So we pray that you would continually let that go forward. We also pray for our class this morning. Thank you for showing us from your word how we can be more like Christ and, Lord, how we are to live this Christian life. And it's been such a blessing going through this series. pray that it's been a help and a blessing to everyone that's heard it. And, uh, Lord, Lord, we look forward to what you're going to have for us today. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter. Five and verse number twenty. You know, uh, this morning I will talk to you about being an ambassador for Christ. An ambassador for Christ. Um, for you guys that may not know what an ambassador is, and I'm sure many of you know, but an ambassador represents his leader in a foreign country. But not as it does he represent his leader, but he also represents his country in another foreign land. And Christ has given us the responsibility, the privilege and responsibility <clears throat> of representing him here on this earth. That's our responsibility. God has given us that responsibility. He's given us a privileged access to him, a very powerful defense against attacks from our adversaries, and the ability to accomplish our assignment. So, not only are we sometimes in hostile lands as, a, as an ambassador, but he also gives us an assignment that we're going, that he wants us to do. And that's, the, that's some of the importance of being an ambassador for Christ. So today we're going to talk about the ambassador's access, the ambassador's adversary. We're going to talk about quickly his assignment and his address and uh, finish up this series over being a uh, ambassador for Christ. So let's look first this morning at the ambassador's assets. Now I want you to look with me in in uh, Second Corinthians chapter five and verse number twenty, and I want you to see what the Word of God says to us this morning. It says this: Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. 
So let's look first at the ambassador's access. Now, as an ambassador, an ambassador is very simply a representing a representation of a leader of another country. By representing uh, an ambassador, by representing his leader uh, and his country, there's a lot of uh, of uh, privileges that ambassadors receive that no one else receives. Uh, like uh, if you're going to be a a uh, ambassador to like Israel or to uh, uh, as a friendly country as Israel, or maybe an ambassador to like maybe a not so foreign uh, country that that is friends with the United States, like China. I know in the news lately, it's been in the news about how some of our diplomats have been uh, thrown out of the United States, and they do, of course, do the same thing to us. But a diplomat's privilege are based on the principle of extra territoriality. And I think I said that right. Extra territoriality is, is the word. And the principle of that is used in international law, which includes the guarantee that people living in a foreign country remain under the authority of their own governments. Now, there are some very there are some very important diplomatic privileges and immunities that ambassadors receive. One of them is that diplomats cannot be arrested for any reason. Uh, their families typically are under that same uh, exemption. Uh, number two, their residences, their papers, and, and and effects cannot be searched or seized. Uh, we couldn't go into the consulate or the uh, an embassy at China and, 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 and take any of their uh, papers or anything like that. That's, a, that's the prerogative of, of the ambassador. Something else, that their personal belongings cannot be taxed by the country in which they serve. No taxes. Another thing is that diplomats, their families, and their staffs enjoy a complete freedom of worship. Like, if, like uh, our diplomats are in China have the, have, have the freedom as an ambassador to worship their God however they choose to. So uh, an ambassador has some very uh, privileged access, okay? Now, in that, in that, we see some authorized access as, as well, okay? First of all, an authorized access. The ambassador has high priority access to information and people because he's authorized to do that. He's been specifically chosen and appointed by the leader of that country to take that responsibility. Now, here in the United States, the President of the United States appoints all the ambassadors. They then must be approved by the Senate. And once an ambassador has been appointed and approved, he has the authority to represent the United States in that foreign country. Now, this concept now so accurately applies to us as God's ambassadors. We have been chosen and appointed by our leader to represent him here, to represent our Lord here. The Bible says in John chapter 20, verse 21, it says, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. John 15, 6, 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordain you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now, a, a an official ambassador can convey special messages from the leader that he represents. So an ambassador, if if an ambassador to China uh, has a message from President Trump, then he has access to the President of China to give him any type of message that uh, that, that he would want him to give. Uh, now, as a authorized representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are commissioned to carry his message to the people of this world. The Bible says in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, the glorious gospel of the blessed God which was commi committed to my trust. That was what Paul said. Paul said that the, that the, the gospel was committed to my trust. And and that was something that he held special to him. So three times, Paul spoke of the gospel as my gospel. 
my gospel. He was committed to the message of God in a very personal way and shared that message with all who crossed his path. And that's exactly what we ought to do. We ought to take the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and share it with everyone we come in contact with. But not only an, act, an authorized access, but we have an available access. Now, an ambassador also has privileged access to his leader, his own king or his own president. Uh, at almost any time, the ambassador can request a meeting with his leader and receive high, high, high uh, receive a very high priority, which means like if the ambassador from China wants to meet with President Trump, then he has a high priority to meet with President Trump. President Trump will drop things just to be able to meet with him. And so at any time, in the opposite way, if the President Trump wants to talk to the leader of China, uh, to the uh, ambassador of China, he can request him to come in and have a personal meeting. So the, the ambassador and the leader are always available to speak to each other. Now, in that, we ought to know and recognize how it is with our Christian life. Isn't it, blessed? Isn't it a blessed truth that we always ha have access to our King as well? That we always have access to the Lord Jesus Christ? We never have to set up an appointment. Or we have, never have to wait in line. We never get a busy signal. Or we, even, we don't even have to leave a voicemail. All right? We don't have to play phone, play phone tag. Christ is always available to us, and he has given us the wonderful privilege of praying without ceasing. What does the Bible say in Hebrews chapter 4? That, that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. Hey, listen, we have constant contact and access to the throne of grace. And the Lord has authorized us for his work, and he is always available to give us what we need to carry out his mission. So, that's one thing that we need to remember, that a privilege access to the leader requires very diligent communication. Some ambassadors fail in their mission because they don't communicate with their leader. A lot of Christians fail because we don't communicate with our leader, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is the ambassador's access. And let's look secondly at the ambassador's adversary. You know, it's not easy to live in a foreign country for an extended uh, length of time. The adversaries in the form of struggles come, such as learning the language, adapting to the food and the culture. An ambassador has, has to be able to adjust to all these things while at the same time maintaining his loyalty to his home country and his identification with his home country. You know, in hostile countries, the ambassador has determined has has some determined adversaries, people who are antagonistic to his mission, that don't like the United States of America or something like that, and and many times ambassadors live under the the uh, real possibility of assassination. So, as a, as an ambassador of Christ, we have a pav powerful adversary as well. And what is our adversary? Well, we know who our adversary is. It's the devil. It's Satan. So, what is our adversary's attack? Well, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 tells us, Be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I remember a story that I just read and studied for this message back in 1898. When, when East Africa was an English colony, British uh, engineers and gangs of natives were building a railroad line to go through the country. And there were two lions that began preying on the workmen. And it seemed as though nothing could stop them. And, and, and every precaution was made, but it seemed like nearly every night for months, a, the lion, a couple lions would come and carry off natives into the jungle. And they were sure that these lions were devils appearing in lion's body, or in lion bodies. And finally, a man by the name of Colonel J.H. Patterson, John Henry Patterson, 
was put in charge of the railroad project, and eventually he was able to kill both of these lines. Now, I reached out to Brother Patterson because I thought this may be a distant relative of his. But this British colonel, Colonel Patterson, came and he tells the story in the book that he wrote, The Man Eaters of Tosavo and Other Eastern African Avengers. And today, these two lions, very lions, are on display today in the Field Museum of the Natural History in Chicago. Now, I said that to say this. The devil is compared to a roaring lion, a man-eater, looking for his prey, and he wants to devour us. And if we belong to, to Christ, folks, he can't have our he can't get to our souls. But one thing that he can do is he can ruin your life, he can make you ineffective for the Lord, and, and we gotta have, we gotta fight against that. And one of the adversary's greatest goals for us is to conform to the world. By blending into the world, we lose a distinction maintained by the by a true follower of Jesus Christ. An ambassador must make it clear that he is not a permanent resident in the country where he is serving. And some some mission, some uh, ambassadors stay too long on the field and become denationalized. They forget their first duty to represent their own country and represent their own leader. And our first duty, folks, as an ambassador of Christ is to seek the lost and communicate Christ's offer of salvation to them. We've got to do that. We must stay on the task and not get distracted from the purpose that Christ has set us to do. What does the Bible say in 1 John? Love not the world, neither the things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So our adversary, the devil, wants us to love the world. He, he wants us to become like the world. But we can only represent the Father and accurately display His holiness and His love if we are separated from the world's lifestyles. It's very important that we do that. That's their attack. And then let's look at the ambassador's defense. You know, we can fight so powerful. Can we or how can we fight so powerful an enemy as Satan? What is our defense against conforming to this world. How can we maintain a holy life for the Lord? Well, Romans chapter 12 tells us that. Where it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies <coughs> a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You say, well, what? how can I do this? You can do it by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. And that means that we're surrendering to the will of God for our lives. We give up ownership. We give up the directorship of our lives to, to the Lord. This, and, and the Bible says this is our reasonable service. Those who would say, well, it's my body and I'll choose to do with it whatever I want are being unreasonable. Ambassadors fulfill their leader's desires, and that is the essence of their responsibility. And transforming and renewing our minds is the next step that we need to do. We can accomplish this by filling our minds with God's Word and shunning things which take our minds and hearts away from God. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us that we need to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We have a powerful enemy. We have a powerful adversary. But we have a mightier king, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to God's will for your life. Embrace his word to renew your life, okay? So, let's go to number three. Let's look at the, amb uh, the ambassador's assignment. We're going to go through these next two quite quickly, okay? What is our duty as an ambassador? What is our assignment? Well, our duty, first of all, is represent God here on earth. 
But our mission is to do what? It's to fulfill the great commandment. What is the great commandment? Jesus told us in Matthew 28. Where he says, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So that is what we are to do. That's our assignment. Our assignment is to, first of all, go. Go, therefore. Now, the word therefore in, in this, this verse, in verse 19, is, is very important. Why? Why did Christ instruct us to go into all the world with the gospel? Why? Because he has all power, in verse number 18. And he promises to personally accompany us in verse number 20. Again, we see that we are authorized by the Lord to fulfill this mission. And what is the mission? Go. Go. We're commanded to go to all the nations. Now listen, we may not be called to be a missionary. We may not be personally called to, be, to go to a foreign field. Some of us may be called to, to witness to the person who lives next door to us. Or who we meet out going door knocking or at the grocery store or something like that. But every Christian needs to participate in some way. We can go, we can give, we can pray, we all have a part. Proverbs 25, 13 says, As the coldest snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him. For he refreshes the soul of his masters. Oh boy. I want to refresh the soul of my master, the Lord Jesus Christ, by telling people about what the Lord has done for me. Our responsibility is to carry the message on behalf of our leader, and that requires faithfulness. Can God trust us to carry his message faithfully? Can God trust you? Can God trust me? Something else, not only do we need to go there for, but we need to go preach. In Mark 16, 15, Jesus told us, that he wants us to carry when we go, to go in the world and preach the gospel everywhere. It's no use going if we do not carry the message of the gospel. Paul carefully described the simple gospel message in, in 1 Corinthians 15, where he talked about Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. The gospel has tremendous power. Uh, Romans 1 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ it is the power of God into salvation to everyone that believeth you see the duty of an ambassador could be summed up as follows I am an ambassador for Christ he sent me to beseech you to be reconciled to God that's what he wants us to do to be reconciled to God so it's very important that we understand our to go and to preach and then finally, let's look at the ambassador's address. Where does the ambassador officially live? In his address, is his address located in his home country or the country of his residence? Now, as according to the dictionary, and I'm quoting here, an ambassador is a diplomatic official representative in residence by one government or sovereign to another, usually for a specific length of time. Now, an ambassador does not normally have his job for life. American ambassadors are usually appointed by a president. So the agreement may, uh, may be that the ambassador will only serve as long as the president holds office. A new president may want to choose a new ambassador. Or perhaps the ambassador may agree to a certain term of service for his own personal reasons. But the point is, an ambassador's real home is his native country. So what does this teach us? Well, it teaches us first that his address is a temporary address. It's a temporary address at home. Now, let's, let's coordinate the two. As we as ambassadors, we have to understand that we're here on earth. We're just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. So 
We are placed here on earth temporarily to serve as ambassadors for Christ. We have a mission. We have a job to accomplish. But it's only for a temporary time of service. Why? Because one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back and rapture us out of here. All right? But it makes me ask this question. Is your home an, is your home an embassy of heaven? A home is not a Christian home simply because Christians live in it. A Christian home is established when Christians follow God's principles and serve Him together. Keep in mind that we as Christians, this is our temporary home. But our permanent address is in heaven. Uh, Jesus made it very clear that we are to look to heaven as our real home. Matthew 6 tells us, verse 19 through 21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay yourselves up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And, and, and Paul even encouraged us to look ahead to our real home in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm not going to take time to read that passage of the Scripture, but I want you to understand, you remember the song, What a Day That Will Be When My Jesus I Shall See? There is coming a day when no heartaches shall come, no more clouds in the skies, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. And then he says this, What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Reminds me of a story of a missionary couple who spent over 50 years on the, on the mission field. Unable to continue their ministry because of poor health, they boarded a ship to return to America. As the ship neared the harbor in New York, they were touched to see a tremendous crowd waiting for them. Welcome banners billowed in the wind and banners and bands sounded with a heartening greeting. And as the ship approached the dock, the missionary couple strained to see the faces of their loved ones and their prayer warriors. It was then that they realized that the crowd, the banners, the bands were not for them. Apparently, there was a political celebrity on their ship as well, and the welcome was for him. Disembarking, the missionary sadly realized that there was no one there to greet them, to thank them for their service, or to welcome them home. But the wife took her husband's arm and whispered, Honey, we're not home yet. Our home country is not wherever we live or serve on earth. It is in heaven. You know, we may not have any people here giving us a hand, telling them, telling them you're doing a good job. But we need to remember our home is not here. Our home is in heaven. As ambassadors for Christ, may we remember that our rewards are above, and may we faithfully serve the King. One day soon, our King will call us home, and we'll all hear Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Are we representing Him well here right now? Are we being faithful ambassadors? I pray you are. I pray these series of lessons over the metaphors of the Christian life have helped you see a picture of what our Christian life should be here on earth. But it's just for a little while. Why? Because soon we're going to be going home. Father, thank you so much for this day. Bless this day. Help us take these things that we've learned and apply them to our heart that we be more like you. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. I love you. And I'll see you soon. God bless.